Now, Halloween represents three main things. Number one is fear. Number two is darkness. And then, and then number three is death. But we, true born again Christians, are called to bring life to the world, the life of Christ Jesus through his holy word. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, if you all want to worship spirit, then let's see what the Bible says about this. Open up your Bibles, if you will. John chapter 4, verse 24, on the screen now. And it says, God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship in spirit and in truth. Amen. Hallelujah. We must worship God in spirit and in truth. Amen. Hallelujah. Next scripture is 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 21. Amen. It says, You cannot drink the cup of the Lord and the cup of demons. You cannot partake of the Lord's table and of the table of demons. So what does that mean? Well, if you're a true born again believer, if you're a true born again believer, you would be participating, as we will today, in the Lord's Supper, the Holy Communion. And you will come symbolically to the table of the Lord's Supper and you will be participating and you know with the Lord. So you if you are participating in the demonic things of Halloween, then you cannot come to the table of the Lord. It's either one or the other. You're either going to be coming to the table and taking Holy Communion and sharing in the Lord's Supper, or you're going to be sharing in the Table of Demons Supper, whatever that is. We are to abstain from all kinds of evil. Amen. Hallelujah. And I'm just going to put on the next scripture, and that is Ephesians chapter 5, verses 8 through 11. And it's New King James, and it says, For you were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. Verse 9, For the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness, righteousness, and truth. Verse 10, Finding out what is acceptable to the Lord and have no fellowship with unfruitful works of darkness, but rather expose them. Rather, we are to expose the things of darkness and we are to let our light shine. Amen. Hallelujah. That's why I'm coming on here today to expose Halloween as being from the dark side demonic and we are to have no fellowship with the things of the dark world amen we are believers and we are to live our life according to god's rules and that is to worship him in spirit and in truth and we cannot come to the lord's table if we are participating in the things of the demonic realm, amen, because holiness and uh, demonic activities do not come together. Black and white cannot mix. I've said it before, if it was paint and you put black paint into white paint, you would get a funny shade of gray paint and the more black you added, the more darker it would get. And you can say, well, vice versa, the more white you put into black, the lighter it will get. Yeah, but it will never be white. It will be a very funny shade of the lightest gray. So you can't say that because it doesn't make good common sense. Amen. Hallelujah. So we're to have no fellowship, no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather we are to expose them. Now, the next scripture is on the screen now, 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 8, and it says, be sober-minded, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, walks around like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. The devil, devil is out there and he wants to destroy you, he wants to devour you, and he's roaming around, he's roaming around looking who 
he can devour, whose life he can destroy, whose life he can lie, lie into, whose life he can steal from, whose life he can destroy. So we must be sober-minded. That's not being drunk with alcohol like all these party goers on Halloween. We must be sober-minded. We must be on alert, be vigilant, and we must be ready and willing to pray to God, turn to God, and ask God to fight the spiritual battle for us. Amen. Hallelujah. To, to bind those spirits, to render those spirits powerless. Amen. Hallelujah. We must come to God in prayer. We don't have the strength ourselves to do that. So we must come to God in prayer and ask God, God, please fight these principalities and powers on our behalf. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. We are not personally called to fight those principalities and powers by ourselves. So what we have to do, we have to do it correctly, and that is to go in prayer and ask God Almighty to fight those battles for us. Not to give us more strength to do it, but ask Him to fight them for us. Because we live in the on the earth. We don't live in a spiritual realm. We don't know what kind of strength they have what kind of uh, power they have, but God does because he is spirit. So he lives in the spiritual realm. And so when we go to him, we should go in prayer, seeking God and asking God to fight those battles on our behalf. Amen. Hallelujah. The Bible does say about putting on the, the armor of God, right? To protect the mind, to protect the, uh, the chest, the heart putting on the belt of truth, the slippers of peace, and the sword in our hand. Now that sword, I'll show you what the sword is, it's that. And when we're armed with the word, then we will not be deceived and we'll be vigilant all the time. But it doesn't say anywhere in here that we should be praying personally to fight with the demonic forces. Now, now we've all done it at some time, including myself, but that's not the way the Bible teaches us. We are not from the spirit world. We live on the earth. God the Father is spirit and he knows how to fight those battles on our behalf. It could be very, very dangerous if you start to uh, pray and fight spiritually those demonic forces and entities because they're a lot stronger than most of us. So be very careful. Always ask God Almighty to fight them for you. Amen. Hallelujah. That is wisdom. 